we back in the hot seat happy black history month to all my black blackity black people out there it's only right it's only right in black history month to shout out my favorite black photographers of all time all time sounds kind of crazy because this is not a cohesive list i gotta i gotta put my disclaimer out there it's not a cohesive list these are photographers that i am currently influenced by that i'm inspired by their work that make me the creative that i am you know in terms of how i see the world how i see my work how i want my work to live in the world there are just there's different things about their work that excite me that make me happy etc 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 so the first photographer on this list is andre d wagner love 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 his work he is a photographer based in brooklyn new york he is not just a photographer he's an artist darkroom printer fashionista all-around cool guy never met him before but he seems like an all-around cool guy and his he tends to shoot obviously mostly film but he shoots in black and white photography which i think helps bring out that nostalgic and like deep reverence in his portraiture i would say i would categorize his work as like a mix of like editorial but mostly street photography which you know someone like me i'm very intimidated by street photography so when i see someone who does street photography it's like yo what is cool about andre is that he has a social work background um and oddly enough I heard that he actually moved to New York to pursue a master's in social work and then he picked up a camera and then the rest is history. I had a chance to see his like 10 year body of work called New City Old Blues in New York at the Gordon Parks Foundation last year. And it was just nice to see a body of work that took a long time to curate. You know, I feel like it reminded me of the importance of putting our work outside of just social media because in this day and age a lot of our work especially as photographers lives and dies on Instagram you know it's not often we get the opportunity to put our work in an exhibition or to put our work in a photo book or a zine or a gallery and things like that and being able to have our work out there where we can experience it in that way very 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 important but besides that i mean in more recent news he just photographed beyonce for essence so i'm like maz is maz is up there and, and i love that he shoots just film when he's working with the celebs i mean he's photographed um he's photographed big people you know i'm kind of blanking on people's <laughs> names right now because beyonce hello Andre wagner is like the standard of someone who like found his creative style his creative voice and like stuck to that and then as he's now you know branching off with like color film people are coming to him for his particular eye and and i love that like I love that. If there's a style of work that you like to do, keep doing that. Develop the confidence in that skill and watch it blow up, you know? So Andre Wagner, love your work. I hope I get to meet you one day. You you seem like a really cool guy. Next on my list is Latoya Ruby Frazier. I learned about her back in 2019, which is, you know, kind of late because she's been in the game forever. She an OG as well. And I found out about her through her work, Flint is Family. And she had spent five months in Flint, Michigan, documenting the people, getting to know them, photographing them. And it was the first time that I've seen someone in modern times create a photo essay that didn't just stop with the images because she then quickly realized that the images yeah it was bringing awareness to like the water crisis that's going on in Flint but it also opened the door for her to do more than just photograph the people and bring awareness but to actually help them get clean water 
and install like this water filtration type thing in Flint to help the people of Flint. And this whole like using photography as activism, using it as a way to send a message to people, using it as a not a way to just document the people that are, you know, suffering and going through this thing, but it's like photographers have power too, you know, people who are into photojournalism, people who are into making photo essays, people who are into documenting people and showcasing the lives that they live to help make it better. That was just really, really inspiring to see. She has a whole TED talk as well, just talking about that experience. But then it's also like similar to Andre, where they spend time creating a body of work and really marinating with it. And what I loved about the Flint is that she spent time in Flint, Michigan. And I feel like we lose, we've lost a lot of that in today's day and age where it's like, we go somewhere, probably spent two weeks, a week maybe, probably photograph while we're on vacation or something. But it's different if you are getting to know the people and becoming part of their community and really developing that trust to photograph them it's very different and I admire that and seeing art that inspires change it being very humanity focused is something that I love and you know I would love to see how my work can take shape in that way and really doing things that are very intentional and I know art doesn't always have to be like that but I really love Latoya's work. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. It's very different. I love the documentary style of it. I love, again, that it's people-focused. I, I have a very big bias for, like, portraiture, um, photographing people in their environments and in their spaces. So, yeah, shout out shout out to you for that project. Um, Flint is family. One of, one of my favorite favorite projects for sure third on this list is Dante Maurice and Ahmad Barber ABDM they are a photography duo I think that's so cool you know like I don't know any other photography duo like I'm gonna keep it a stack 100 like photography is almost like a solo career where like you build a team of people who just help you on set right? They help you with lighting. They might help you. You have like the art director who helps you with like the scope of work. And like, you have like maybe the people who manage you and like help you find jobs, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to like the creation of photographs, it's usually a solo job, right? So to see a duo and they're young, you know, they're, they're a young duo. They take on projects together. They work together. They have different skill sets yet they complement each other so well they are also like portraiture focused or people focused but they're very different from Andre and Latoya being that a large majority of their imagery making is in a studio it's heavy into the beauty and into the polished retouched look which works for you know if you want to be in like the magazine editorial space because these guys are on the cover of almost every magazine. They photograph Zendaya, they photograph Queen Latifah, they photograph Alton Mason, they they photograph everybody. They photograph everybody. Everybody you know, they, they probably have it. And they probably got it on the cover of a magazine too. Like I said, I don't think I've ever seen a photo duo. Like, I'm trying to think, like, I don't, if anybody wanna be a photo duo with me, you know, we could we can negotiate some terms. Like, it, it, it could be, it could be fun, it could be fun. But they are killing the game right now. They're they're crushing it. Seriously, seriously. Check them out. Dante Maurice and Ahmad Barber. Their work is insane. And that's really all I got to say about it. Their work is insane. Insanely good, might I add. Number four on this list is Malik Sidibe. He is a Malian photographer. He is more of an OG, I would say, and I included him because he's an African photographer, you know, and he came up at a time, you know, during the 50s, 60s, 80s, where it's po- it's a post-colonialism world, and 
it was at a time where Africans were redefining themselves, not just as artists, but as like a country, as a community, as a culture, as a nation. You know, we, we've gotten rid of the European colonialist powers. And yes, one could argue that, you know, they still are very much so infiltrated in today's day and age. But at that time, when countries first got their freedom, it was beautiful to see how people were rewriting the story of their country. And one thing that I really love about Malik's work is that he, it wasn't perfect, you know? I And I think that aspect of it being like imperfect, like it was just like a backdrop and he would photograph, you know, men and women, friends, families, parents and their kids, parties and things like that. And just like it being like a very spur of the moment type of work, it, it it's him documenting people who have never been photographed a day in their life. You know, there are like my grandparents and their parents, they, they, they were alive in that era, you know, and my parents have more photos than their parents had, you know, and that's because the camera and this art of taking photos was still so new to them. And I think the other cool thing too is that they're redefining it in their own, through their own lens. Malik coming up in a time where Africans were redefining that for themselves and photographing people who might otherwise not have a photograph of themselves, it, it's beautiful to see, you know, and, and to see what life was like back in those days. And I know there's, um, there's a magazine at that time called The Drum that had a lot more photo work from Africans, photographers throughout the continent, uh, looking to get my hands on them. But he's one that was a big pioneer in that and I admire his work and I admire the honesty in it now the fifth person on my list is Adger Cowens now if I could have a photography grandpa he definitely would be my my grandpa like he is a grandpa <laughs> he is a grandpa he's like 87 88 years old I got to tap in, man. I got I to gotta go check him out where he's at. Um, but he is by far like a grandpa in photography to me. Like, like I said, he has a very abstract sense to his, his image making. He also does portraiture, but it's almost like it's either like really zoomed in or really like far out in the distance. He plays a lot with shapes, with shadows, and I think that's really, really cool. And I've discovered him, I said discovered like I'm like an agent <laughs> or something, but I found out about his work in, I think 2020, 2020, 2021, because this is like quarantine was still a thing and the Whitney Museum had did a virtual exhibition on their Kamonge workshop and for those that don't know the Kamonge workshop is a black photographer photo collective that was started back in 1963 I believe and it was founded by uh, Lou Draper Louis Draper and it had a bunch of other photographers and Kamonge is actually a Kenyan word from the Kokuyu people that means a group of people acting together. And Adra Comins, of course, was one of the photographers that was in this group. And I just loved how he approached his work, which I thought was, you know, really, really cool. And during like the exhibition, they had like a panel with the members that are still alive and he had said that he views his work you know as as art and art is the outward expression of inner development and I was like art is the outward expression of inner development as an artist everything we do 
is an outward expression of how we feel inside of what we learn of what we grow that's why art it's so hard as an artist to just stay the same if you're a musician your sound is going to evolve if you are a content creator your content's going to evolve if you're a painter your painting's going to evolve if you're a photographer your photography is going to evolve because your art is a direct reflection of what's going on in your internal world and as you grow so does your work and I just, I love that quote so much. And it honestly is probably one of my favorite quotes. I, I, I say it to myself all the time. I use it a lot because it's true, you know? And to see someone who, even as he's 80 something years old, he's still like pushing the envelope and trying different mediums, you know? And that's something about that time of creatives. They didn't just stay in one lane. You know, they, if they were into film, they made a film. If they were into painting, they did painting. If they were into fashion, they designed. Like, they didn't put themselves in a box. And I think that's something, it's very admirable because as artists, we shouldn't be put in a box. You know, we should chase our creativity. We should chase our curiosity and do whatever feels good and feels right in that moment. And of course, I couldn't do a top five without doing an honorable mention who is really the OG of all OGs, the goats of all goats, and that is Gordon Parks. And Gordon Parks is like the epitome of photography. He's like the great grandfather of photography. And The truth is, I didn't know too much about Gordon Parks besides that he was, like, everyone's favorite black photographer at some point. But I had a chance to read his autobiography, A Choice of Weapons, back in 2022. And it, I learned so much about this man. I was like, yo, it was such an honest depiction, an honest written form of like his journey as an artist and like I just said they don't stay in a lane I mean Gordon Parks has directed movies um he's like I think his most famous movie is Shaft he's written music he used to be a train conductor which was how he traveled he was in the military he's done so many different things that various pockets of his life but the thing that stayed a constant was him being a photographer and him taking his camera everywhere and one of the my favorite stories that he told in the book was how on his very first photo gig he had like got this like large format camera and he had gotten his first client he was like taking photos for a store and he uh shows up and he's like looking at the camera and it looked kind of cockeyed he was like this don't really look right but like I guess I gotta fake it till I make it you know I can't look like I don't know what I'm doing I I, I asked for this job I asked for this so let me do it and whole time he's doing it Maz does not know what he is doing he does not know what he's doing and shoots over shoot ends he goes home he develops the film literally every frame that he developed was black with the exception of one all the photos he took it was a waste he only had one good photograph that he could see and that photograph was like immaculate right and he's in the kitchen freaking cursing himself like he's like yo why would i do that why would i do that um and his wife's like, yo, is everything okay? Everything is okay. He's like, no, my life's over. My life is over. It's done. Because I just I just did a whole shoot and there's only one good image. So his saw for it was, I'm going to print out this, it, this one good image and I'm going to go show the client. He goes to the client, shows the one image. And the client is like, oh, this is great. This is lovely. I can't wait to see the rest. He's like, man, (laughs) should he lie? But he decided to be honest and said that this was the only photo. Like, he, the other ones weren't good. Um, And the client did show him some grace, which is something, you know, a lot of us 
don't have these days I feel like if I was the client I would have been like yo what we just did a whole shoot you know we just spent so much money doing the shoot you tell me I only got one good image but she showed him grace showed him mercy and they replanned the shoot and he learned from his mistake and he was able to then actually photograph properly and he got way more better images but that's how he got his start and I was so humbled reading that because how many of us like we look up to this guy Gordon Parks man he's Gordon motherfucking Parks he's like the greatest of all time when it comes to photography but how many of us actually like when he first started out he was not good he was not good he didn't know what he was doing he was faking it till he made it and he was just following his curiosity and as he was doing that he was able to then develop his eye develop his skill set etc 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 that reminded me that it's okay to be a beginner we're not always going to get it right especially as creatives we're all figuring it out and even if we make a mistake even if we fail there's always an opportunity to make it better to learn from that mistake and to develop as an artist and now we know Gordon Parks is one of the greatest photographers so shout out to him man shout out to him but yeah this concludes my list you know I there were so many other people that I wanted to include I might do a part two next month that focuses exclusively on black women photographers but for this month, you know, I wanted to show a little variety in here of different styles and people that, you know, I liked. But if you couldn't tell already, I have a very strong bias for portraiture. I love people focused photography. Yeah, these are these are the people that I measure my work up to. They're my mentors from afar. And I hope one day I can manifest meeting them in person and having a conversation with them and, and really taking a deeper dive into their work. But until that time, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Share the video with someone you know. Who are your favorite black photographers? Comment them down below, and I'll see you in the next video. And remember, the G is to me, C is the G is to you, and I'm always, always,